Pakistan is facing unprecedented flooding and a severe humanitarian crisis. One third of the country is underwater and 33 million people have been impacted. This is the latest. First and foremost, it's Pakistan's geography and topography. The country is home to the most glaciers anywhere in the world outside of the two poles. Additionally, Pakistan is home to fertile agricultural lands, arid deserts, and a number of cities along its coastline that are also dealing with rising sea levels, including Karachi, a huge megacity in the region. Pakistan is only contributes to less than 1% of global emissions that lead to climate change. However, for the past two decades, the country has consistently been ranked as one of the top 10 countries vulnerable to climate change. Compounding its geography is the fact that there is a lack of political will, poor planning, and a lot of illegal construction that has led to the disaster we're seeing today. Many of the buildings and communities that have washed away have been built on long rivers and waterways that were already impacted by the 2010 floods. No one country can fully prepare for the scale of the disaster that Pakistan is facing. However, a contributing factor has been insufficient planning and poor governance. There has been a disconnect between the data, science, and the planning efforts at all levels of the government, whether it's national, provincial, or local. Furthermore, the actual stockpiles of supplies for relief efforts do not meet the needs that the country is facing right now. Pakistan's ongoing political and economic instability have also hampered relief efforts. Pakistan needs an influx of cash to stabilize its economy, as well as international assistance to provide relief to its citizens. This is not the last extreme weather event that Pakistan is going to face. In the future, these weather events will become more frequent and more severe. The country needs to make large-scale institutional changes to better plan for and prepare for the future disasters that awaits them. One thing that Pakistan can do is better use the data and connect it to their policy and planning process. Pakistan can also invest in the next generation of climate scientists, urban planners, and water experts. This is where the international community comes in. Pakistan, yes, needs assistance in the immediate aftermath of this disaster. However, the international community can play a role by providing technical assistance and support to Pakistan as they make these changes across their government and support future endeavors to prevent the scale of the disaster that the country is facing today.